How's it going, everybody? Uh, I'm Bert Lum, and uh, the executive director of Hawaii Open Data. And you are here uh, at the Han Accelerator event that we just put on. And uh, it's been a really great year of 2012. Trying to, you know, get the public and the citizens involved with city government. And we have culminated here at Han Accelerator in the form of a, like a demo day. And what we've done is we've encouraged uh, developers and designers and programmers to look at some of the applications that they could build using open data. And what we hope to do is create this kind of opportunity for more uh, demo days, more applications, more developers to come together and really show us what it is that they can do and, and hope it, with uh, these kinds of uh, opportunities show that uh, Hawaii is at the cutting edge of the cross-section between technology, open data, and creativity, and innovation. I am really jazzed, encouraged, thrilled about all the people here that have taken the time to, to look at uh, the data that's available, taken the time to put a team together, taking the time to you know develop an idea and all basically for the community and this is a to me this is a real great sign of this sort of selfless act that I think all of you have contributed to uh, in this open data movement and I'm, I'm really proud to be a part of this whole um, event as well as this, this movement that we all here are a part of anyway, so anyway so he, he enabled us to push it over the edge and this is why we are here today and I, you know, I hope the brigade keeps it going. We're going to be part of it. And when the next mayor comes in, he better damn well keep what's happening here, and he better damn well keep it going. If not, I think I would like all of you to be down there at City Hall during city council meetings and screaming at these council people, four new ones, by the way, that we got to keep this stuff happening. And again, thanks so much for being here. You know, for me, I, I, I love technology, but I also am really... Uh, I think at heart I'm more of a community person. Like, uh, that, that's really what drives me. And so when I had this opportunity and um, Gordon and Gordon's vision of um, let's let's get this 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 technology we have out into the hands of the public and get them involved and get them engaged. And you know, it, not, none of it happens without support, um, really grassroots support from um, all these all you folks that are sitting in the room today. So. Thank you for supporting us, and yes, if, if let's keep let's keep watching this and see what happens next year, and if, if um, we can we can be a thorn in the side of, of, of whoever decides to stop this, because we we need to keep moving, we need to keep connecting citizens with their communities, and we need to connect keep connecting citizens with our government. The the goal for cities.data.gov is to create an environment where new civic developers can have a market bigger than the city that you're in. So you know, imagine if you're building a safety app or a crime app, you know, right now your market is Honolulu, but imagine if there's 40, 50, 60, eventually 100 cities on there, and not just the cross sites, by the way, we're federating in from Secan sites, from Junar sites, from home built sites, from you know, any, any site that you want to federate your city data in there, the basic idea is to allow the data to be shared and compared, and then ultimately create portability for your code so that you can have a much larger market than a single city. So it's a pretty exciting initiative. It'll take a little while to roll out, but uh, keep your eyes on that. Um, but, so the main feature of this app is in pop-ups, and that's where each show what you can do there. So um, this is populated by um, the fields that it's applicable to on modern regional parks. So you can have a restroom, shower, 
Version 2, as I said, would allow for users to rate features and sort um, the different parts and hikes based on that feature. So like, if you want a really good tennis court or a really good bathroom even, you can sort the um, parts um, based on that. In general, whenever you're sharing um, numerical data, it's probably good to show it um, in relative form instead of absolute form. So when you're showing the crime index, you know, two on a scale of what? So it, it gives give some sort of a, um, a relativity to it. Uh, so we can say that GDP is a relatively poor measure of human well-being. Originally conceived in the 1930s and 40s as a way to measure the health of the economy, it's not intended as an overall assessment of well-being. It neglects environmental, economic, and social factors uh, that are very prominent today. And it does a very poor job of capturing trade-offs between economic development, uh, environmental costs, and social costs as well. It's out there, but the other thing that it supports the four goals of the Wahoo Law. Wah and you can see the objectives underneath the Wahoo Bike Plan that this feeds into. So it's not just, hey, we're developing because we've got this neat data that's out there. We really think it can help further the plan. And again, use the citizens to, to raise their awareness of what's in the plan, get some, you know, the milestones and objectives, and get some support out there. In terms of the links, obviously, you want to make it that robust. There's a great amount of data that's out there already, but people just don't know that's out there. So it could be, you know, the state transportation plan. It could be some of the funding that's out there for the Hawaii Bike Fund. It could be the rules and regulations for and, or safety information, or even links into the, the schools uh, programs that are out there through the Bike Ed program. Uh, the idea is, with something like a Socrata API or like the city, city and county data, there's, there's a lot, and it's kind of scary because there's so much data. And I think if you're a novice, you don't really know where to start. Uh, and so we see these, you know, if you're thinking about these data mines, you know, what would you do if you had a data mine? You send in a little canary, somebody weaker than you, to go check it out and, and see how it's going to go. Uh, and so we wanted to focus on this idea of having an entry point for anyone to access the data and, uh, and help us make sense of it. So that was, that was the driving principle behind Data Canary. So it's basically a thumbnail into it, or can I enlarge that and actually study that graph that you've made. Uh, so that's something we wanted to do. We didn't get to that point uh, in our development, but I think we will uh, basically in this deep dive view, let you enlarge it, maybe show you the full aggregated data set, and then come up with a few alternate random selections of those, of those same data. Turn it back to the second screen. Yeah, it is. You know what? Screw the projector. <laughs> All right, so this is my awesome surface. <laughs> this is my app. See the pretty little icon that Shiloh made? It's really cool. So you launch it, and voila, map of Hawaii with all of our data points and this awesome list over here. So what we've built in is a rating system. So let's say I roll up to Green Energy Outlet, and I want to use their charging station, and the guy's a jerk, and spits on me or something, <laughs> I can give him like one star. <laughs> or I give him five. But, <laughs> what? His name is Frank. Oh, it's, it's Frank. <laughs> His name's Frank. I'm going to give him five stars. No, no, I gave him five stars. And you can barely see the links, but you can actually click here and it will take you to National Data Assessor of Karen. Uh, we're lucky because we actually have uh, uh, one of the, one of, we have a data catalog as one of our data sets. Uh, another uh, data set that we have is with uh, uh, in the Hawaii database is uh, farmers markets in Hawaii and so uh, I just found this Vimeo video and I was, kind of, I was like oh let's add like that information uh, that's coming from data.gov <laughs>
Well, his app is up when you find it, but the problem is the data. Well, he, he, he wants to... He wants to clean it up, too. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't think it's the same, it's the same problem. But... Uh, I'm a police officer, I want to drive from my own area, so you can do that as well here. So you can draw, click, and then you want. <coughs> and it shows the timing and stuff like that. So most of the uh, features that are used are free services that I'm using for the ESRI. So the only thing that is required for this application to work uh, is the crime incident mapping services that is published by county. So once, if you keep on updating that layer and updating that service, uh, this application can keep, keep uh, running. The way I would interpret that question is uh, you have, this is their total amount of budget as it's laid out in, in this data set. And then you can see that they have two funds. Most of it's coming from the general fund, but they do have some funding from the highway fund. Uh, and then you can hover over these individual things to see those amounts. Uh, and that will, so it shows it there and here. And um, right now it calculates, it mostly calculates everything with respect to the overall budget. So if you see a percentage, it's talking about the whole set of money. Uh, but it would be possible to extend it to, say, look at this slice as a percentage of their entire budget just to kind of see where it comes from. So just let's figure out a way that we can take the data that's available and put it in a place that people will use it by default. So we're proposing the live traffic signs, as you see here, there's LEDs in different colors in the shapes of the roads ahead that show you where traffic is moving freely and where it's slowing down or areas you might want to avoid. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> 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 okay. So we also do have a mostly working prototype of this, and <clears throat> so you can see like the LEDs for different colors based on which road. Some of them don't quite work, but you can see the overall idea. Develop one and for the city, and then have a model for building them that we can use for any signs we need. We could type to the crime mapping and put it on the other side. <laughs> 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 or. The purposes of, of Han Celebrator, we want to just recognize all of the presenters, all the apps that were presented today, and we really want to hats off to everybody. We will try, even if you did not win, we will keep in touch and look at ways that we can help to perhaps help to get the apps completed uh, and get them on the market and just get them so that they are in a, in a condition where we can actually share them with the public. And we want to do that. So that is going to be part of our, our mission going forward as well. So um, judges, do you guys want to, do you want to go into a room and chat or? Yeah. Okay, so. <clears throat> oh, no, we don't, we don't, we don't have all day. So. We learned so much from the first time that we did this um, con contest. It was uh, just under a year ago. And when we did that contest, we had no data.honolulu.gov. We had no ArcGIS in the cloud. And it was a completely different event. And in one year, the quality of applicant is, it, it's just, the bar is raised so high. I, I really don't even know where you go from here. Without further ado, I'm gonna start with the uh, second runner up. And um, this, is a, this is a man after my own heart. He's, he's kind of like me, I also have no filter. Uh, Derek and Shiloh with Charged. This was actually something that I, I talked about at City Camp. I'm, I was so happy to see this project get done. So, first runner up with crime mapping is Sharam. Come on up. First runner up. 
Sorry, budget. It's like...